Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Sue Klebold, the mother of the notorious killer, Dylan Klebold? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of Sue Klebold, then move to my analysis. Susan Frances Klebold was born on March 25, 1949, in Columbus, Ohio. She goes by the name Sue. When she was in college, she met a man named Thomas Klebold, and they became romantically involved. They married in 1971. Sue earned a master's degree in educational sciences in 1975. In 1978, she had a son named Byron. In 1980, the family moved to Littleton, Colorado, where Sue found work helping people with disabilities. In 1981, Sue had a second son named Dylan. Starting in 1995, Dylan attended Columbine High School in Columbine, Colorado. In January 1998, Dylan and a fellow classmate named Eric Harris were arrested for breaking into a van and stealing tools. They pleaded guilty to felony theft and were admitted to a juvenile diversion program, which they successfully completed. Not long after this, they started planning an attack at Columbine High School. They intended on detonating explosives in the school and shooting students and teachers. On April 20, 1999, Dylan and Eric went to the high school and conducted the attack. Their efforts to detonate explosives failed, so they relied on firearms. They murdered 13 people and injured 21 others before bringing an end to their own lives. The attack sent a shockwave through the community, the country, and the world. Understandably, people wanted to know if there had been any indications that the attack was going to occur. As it turns out, Dylan and Eric exhibited many behaviors that foreshadowed the attacks. There were plenty of warning signs. Here are a few specifically involving Dylan. He hacked into the school computer system and was suspended for three days. Dylan was arrested for theft along with Eric, as I mentioned. He wrote a short story in school about a man killing students. A teacher who was concerned about it informed his parents. In a school project, Dylan wrote a paper about Charles Manson. In another school project, he and Eric made a video for a class about people who shoot bullies in a school. In 1998, Dylan wrote a message in Eric's yearbook which mentioned murdering police officers, blowing things up, and getting revenge in the commons. This was a reference to the high school cafeteria. Many people wondered how the parents of the shooters had missed the warning signs that both Dylan and Eric had exhibited. If the parents knew about any of the red flags, why did they fail to act? Out of the four parents, only Sue Klebold stepped forward in any meaningful way to address the issue. Through her attorney, she issued a statement expressing condolences to the families of the victims. Later, she wrote them letters. Sue and her husband settled a lawsuit filed by the victims' families and met with several of them afterward. In 2014, Sue and her husband divorced. They had been married for 43 years. Sue stated that the only thing they had in common was the tragedy, but they did not feel the same way about it. In 2016, Sue published a book titled A Mother's Reckoning, Living in the Aftermath of Tragedy. All the money earned from the book was donated to charity. Here is a summary of this book. Sue offered her thoughts about Dylan's personality, mental health, and motivation. She also offered details about her struggle to cope with the fact that her son committed such a horrible crime. Dylan was described as private, awkward, impulsive, stressed, moody, distant, angry, and having an intense fear of embarrassment. He had trouble in school, was arrested, neglected his chores, and had unexplained stomach pain. He often kept his feelings hidden. Sue talked about how she and her husband tried to be good parents. They stayed involved in Dylan's education, searched his room from time to time, and checked up on him when he visited friends. The family had holiday dinners, movie nights, and many other normal interactions. Prior to the attack, Sue never questioned Dylan's mental health. After the attack, 
she realized that she missed the many warning signs. Sue took responsibility for that failure, but implied that anyone in a similar circumstance would have also missed the warning signs. There were two primary messages in the book. One, mental health symptoms caused Dylan's behavior, and two, Dylan was not a monster. In 2017, Sue gave a 15-minute TED Talk, which has been viewed millions of times. Here is a summary of that talk. The attack was a horrible tragedy, and Sue feels badly about it. Many people have asked her how she did not know that Dylan was a killer, and said things like, what kind of mother were you? Sue explained that she thought she was a good mother, but she failed. Her son Dylan was a completely different person than she believed. She implied that he was good at hiding his true feelings. Sue tried to figure out what happened and ultimately determined that Dylan had mental health problems. As a result of Dylan's actions, Sue has panic attacks and has suffered in other ways. She will have to live with the pain he caused for the rest of her life. Due to the many statements that Sue made in her book, in the TED Talk, and during various interviews, she has become a highly controversial figure. Some people believe that Sue is a great person for coming forward and talking about her experiences. She has been open, honest, and willing to discuss a challenging topic. Other people believe that Sue has narcissistic tendencies and only came forward to absolve herself of responsibility. She has a distorted view of Dylan and is promoting this narrative about his mental health rather than emphasizing how she missed warning signs. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. A key part of Sue's argument about Dylan is that he was really just a follower, and Eric Harris was the leader. Eric was psychopathic and wanted to kill other people, whereas Dylan was depressed and his tendencies were self-destructive. I think it's likely that both of the offenders had personality pathology and were depressed. The problem is that their mental health symptoms do not necessarily explain why they committed the crime. Mental health may be a part of it, but many factors contributed. Looking at Dylan specifically, I think that he was primarily interested in revenge. He specifically mentioned how he was upset about being rejected by love interests, saying that it led to infinite sadness. He also believed that he had been the victim of bullying. Dylan wanted to feel powerful. He wanted to be in a position of authority and dominate others. The shooting gave him a chance to fulfill his fantasy, if only for a short time. Eric Harris appeared to be more motivated to carry out the crime, but Dylan was the first to mention the attack in his writings. I think it is reasonable to believe that they both wanted to carry out the attack, and they were equally guilty. Item number two. Sue initially refused to believe that Dylan was involved in the attack, but after watching videos of the tragedy, she changed her mind. She eventually acknowledged that Dylan was a willing participant. This demonstrates a degree of flexible thinking. At least Sue was willing to change her mind when presented with the evidence. Item number three. There is no question that Sue missed the warning signs that Dylan was dangerous. But why did she miss them? In her book, Sue mentioned that the family was having financial problems and she was distracted with issues related to her son and with her husband. In addition, she didn't think that Dylan's behavior had any larger significance. After all, teenage males frequently get arrested and find themselves in other challenging situations due to their bad behavior. I think that Sue simply wanted to believe the best of her son, which is a fairly common attitude for a parent. Dylan made extensive efforts to hide his preparation for the attack. There was a lot that Sue did not know. This illustrates how a parent is in a great position to observe the behavior of a child, but in a terrible position to conduct an unbiased assessment. There was a lot of information, but not a good analysis. If other people had access to the same information as Sue, most of them probably would have acted on the warning signs. Item number four. One good example of how Sue failed to recognize Dylan's negative traits was an incident with a refrigerator that she talked about. On one occasion, Sue was angry at Dylan for not completing chores and pushed him against a refrigerator. He threatened to lose control, but Sue dismissed it as just his way of expressing frustration. This was a great opportunity for Sue to recognize Dylan's anger, but she minimized his reaction. Item number five, one of Sue's most significant mistakes was letting Dylan spend time 
with Eric Harris, even though the pair had already been in trouble together. For example, they had been arrested for stealing from a van. Maybe she was concerned about cutting Dylan off from a friend. Perhaps she was too busy attending to other issues to care. It's not clear what happened. There is no doubt that some of the warning signs were subtle, but Dylan's arrest was not. Again, a teenage male getting arrested is not unusual, but the cause of the bad behavior still needs to be addressed. One could argue that this was Dylan's cry for help. It's not something that should have been swept under the rug. Item number six. Some people contend that Sue Klebold has narcissistic characteristics, like being self-centered, arrogant, and insecure. Advocates of this position have introduced a few different arguments. For example, Sue sent a more recent photograph of Dylan to the media after they used an older one, as if she wanted him to look better. She kept a hair appointment the day after the murders. Sue was focused on how Dylan forgot Mother's Day during the incident where she pushed him into the refrigerator. She pointed out that Dylan killed fewer people than Eric, and she has tried to act as if anyone would have failed to recognize the warning signs, just like she did. Here are my thoughts about this. Everybody has narcissistic characteristics to some degree. Without narcissism, survival would not be possible. By coming forward and talking about Dylan, Sue was in uncharted territory. There was no tradition or pattern regarding how someone in her position should behave. Discussing Dylan's role in the attack was like walking through a minefield. Anything that Sue did wrong was going to be noticed by everyone because people were sensitive about the topic. I don't think the evidence supports the idea that Sue is particularly narcissistic. Rather, I think the sensitivity to her statements was heightened. People are understandably angry that her son murdered people, but there's nothing they can do to Dylan. With Sue, it's a different story. She has become a target for criticism. Sue may not have been the best parent, and she may have a distorted view of Dylan, but she was not responsible for what happened. Dylan made his own choices. He knew the difference between right and wrong. Furthermore, in his writings, Dylan admitted that he had a good family. He implied that his family was not the source of his problems. Item number seven, what do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Before the attack, Sue did not pay attention to what was going on with her son Dylan, and she minimized his bad behavior. After the attack, she had to reevaluate her entire way of thinking. She needed to believe at some level that she was a good mother, but realized that would not fly with the public. Therefore, she presented this argument that at least she was not a bad mother. Sue blamed her son's mental health, suggested that anyone could have missed the warning signs, and implied that she was a victim too. She tried to make sense of everything and to empathize with the families of the victims, but she was obstructed by her own lack of insight. She was also dealing with a tremendous amount of grief. She lost a child in this tragedy as well. Through her response to public opinion, she was denied permission to mourn for Dylan. Every time she felt grief, it was reflected back on her, as if to rebuke her with the question, how dare you feel sorry for a killer? This created a vicious cycle of ambivalent feelings. If she had feelings of grief, she was bad. If she didn't have feelings of grief, she was still bad. Ultimately, I think Sue bore as much responsibility as she could handle. Now moving to my final thoughts. The behavior of Sue Klebold presents questions that are difficult to answer. Before the attack, was she good or was she bad? After the attack, was she helpful or unhelpful? I think the truth is that Sue can be all these things at the same time. She can lack insight, but be good-hearted and caring. She can empathize from a place of genuineness, but not have accurate empathy. And she can distort the past, but lack ill intent. It is possible to dislike and disapprove of Sue and feel sorry for her at the same time. In my opinion, I believe that Sue Klebold deserves the benefit of the doubt. She was willing to take some responsibility, reveal her experiences with her son, and engage in a difficult discussion. I do not think that society should discourage that type of behavior. In her book, Sue suggested that not one day passes where she does not feel an overwhelming sense of guilt, both for the way she failed Dylan and for the murders he committed. She also talked about how her husband suggested that he wished Dylan would have killed them too. 
when contemplating his mother's never-ending feeling of guilt, one could argue that, in a way, he did. Those are my thoughts on the case of Sue Klebold. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.